What I want to talk about is, a, is a, an agent-based model that I've been working on for a couple of years now. Um, it's, it's got all the attributes of, of a comp, you know, it's, it, it's got agents following very simple rules. It's a complex adaptive system I'm modeling, I guess. Um, but also it's very complicated. It's simple and complicated at the same time. And so trying to get my head around what the model is actually doing uh, is a question. But basically the idea here is, is I started with uh, archaeological assemblages. I was looking at trade networks, trade exchange networks in the North American Southwest. And one of the things I was finding was variation uh, from household to household uh, in consumer committees, communities, excuse me, uh, in the amount of trade where they were getting. And it was variation that wasn't couldn't be explained by just random chance. It was, it was far beyond uh, anything that could be sampling error. Uh, the, the social situation just didn't seem to, it didn't make sense to think that, you know, these are like leaders that are being more successful or powerful rich people. It just was, um, it was just at a very small scale. And the, one of the things um, that occurred to me reading some ethnography in particular, was that, um, and, and just sort of thinking through the process, in, in real small scale societies, a lot of uh, trade happens through kinship networks. Not, it's not all, in, in my model it's all, but, but, um, but a lot of it will happen through these kinship networks, and uh, if you pay close attention uh, to the structure of these kinship networks from the individual perspective, individuals uh, wind up with really different connections to different places. Some people have lots of kin, some people have few. And um, that, I think, uh, potentially could have been, could be driving the variation that I'm seeing. Some people are more connected. So I tried to build this uh, agent-based model to uh, address the question. So um, I'm going to run through really quickly the characteristics of the, of the model and, and kind of where I was a year ago. And then I'm going to uh, get into some new stuff, trying to understand the actual uh, underlying networks that are created in the model. So here's sort of a basic view of the model. Um, basically, it creates, uh, it's more flexible than this. I won't go into everything that's changeable. There's too much. It's complicated because there's too many variables that I can change. But basically, in everything I'm going to talk about, it creates eight villages, population size in the village uh, varies, and, and there's a lot of random stuff going on. But in each case, villages number one and number two, sort of at the left, you can think of it as west to the east if you want, or left to right. But at the, at the left side of the, of the simulation are producers, and everybody else is just a consumer. We'll pay a lot of attention when we get there to uh, village eight at the end of the line variation in that uh, village. Um, okay, so basically populate the village with agents, uh, changing the size, varying the size. Agent sex are randomly assigned, females look for males to marry. Um, when they find suitable mates in their home village, they marry them. If they don't, they marry somebody in a different village. And it's the system in, in the in the model, at least, is um, natural local, so the, the man, the male, moves to the female. Um, so um, basically, you have to run it for a while to get multiple generations and sort of build up these networks. So when you start, there's not really networks. But link parents to children, and siblings get linked, spouses get linked, and um, like a, a man will be linked to his wife's uh, parents and siblings, and, and a woman to her parents. Um, because there's a bunch of uh, random effects here. Some individuals wind up with larger networks than others. Um, and because the males move when they marry out of the village, but not all of them, right? Some of them marry in their home village, some marry several villages away. People wind up with links uh, to all kinds of different places. Uh, and you can't really tell anything from the links there, but it's just sort of showing that villages or individuals and villages are connected. And then in the simulation, the Females in, in villages one and two start making pottery, so all the women make pottery, and then there's this, an algorithm that sort of has people asking for, for pots, and if there's enough pottery, if the person they ask has enough, they trade it to 
And, and so the pottery moves from left to right or moves to the system, which is loosely based on uh, one of the one of the actual uh, ceramic exchange systems I've studied. So here are some things. So I did a bunch of stuff. Uh, the last year's CA is mostly looking at aggregate data from lots and lots of kinds of different sizes and stuff. 21,000 runs. Each value in these graphs represents one run of the simulation. Um, and a couple of interesting things showed up. First off, if you scale it for the population, because if you start with more people, you then there's more pots and more. But once you scale for population, it turns out that starting with smaller, so each, each uh, box plot here is a, is a village size. So you start with 100 people in the village, or 300, or 500, or whatever. But smaller villages wind up um, um, in village eight, so the end of the line, more pottery gets to the end of the line when the village size is smaller. Um, I think that's because um, when village size is larger, there's more marriages within the village and um, not so many outside the village, and so you don't establish those longer distance links. And, and in fact, what I wound up arguing was that probably what's going on is that we're creating sort of a small world network in which some people are linked um, back from one end of the system to the other. Um, but I never really got beyond saying that that's probably what's going on. Right? So um, what I'm going to try to do now uh, is go back and actually, uh, with some new uh, data, running the simulation again, getting more output of actual individual. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I was going to throw this one into. This is from last year's runs too, but this, but I did actually get into in, in one case looking at the at individuals, and um, notice here that um, at the top where the population is smaller. You get in that, in that village at the end of the system, you wind up with one individual with really a lot of stuff compared to everybody else. And uh, same thing doesn't happen with the um, larger village size. Um, and again, I think it's that small world network that you want. Um, but can I prove it? Well, you have to tell me what you've done here. Because I'm, I'm not sure I can, because of, but, I, but I think it's, it's true. So in any case, what I'm going to try to do today is answer the question on top of what can we say about these networks that are being created by the simulation. Uh, in particular, how do they vary with population size, because that, I think, is really uh, important. Um, and then also take a quick look at centrality and, and look at also the path lengths, you know, who's connected back to the producer villages. And we'll focus, when we do that, on agents in the, most, the village most distant from the producers. Um, so I ran, in this case, because of digging into individual um, networks and digging deeply into individual runs, I've only got 60 runs of the simulation. We'll look at some of that aggregated, and it turns out that that still is a little too complicated when we'll actually get down to individual runs and, in, and a few individuals within one single run uh, to try and look at this a little bit. Um, so the first thing we can say about the networks created I don't expect you to interpret these in particular, but just note that these are identical settings of the simulation of these networks, which are really quite different in size and density and, and the extent to which uh, people from the different villages are intermingled and linked closely. So that's, that's one thing. So let's start with looking at degree distribution. That's probably long enough. If anyone can see anything in that, it's fine, but it doesn't seem to matter, right? The degree distribution is roughly distributed the same. You know, it's got a bit of a, a right skew, but it doesn't seem to matter how big the, the population is for that particular measure. Um, we look at between this, it matters a lot, but then, you know, there's a whole lot more links and a whole lot more people. So what I did is I tried to scale that back down um, just by dividing by the maximum value for each population size. And again, that's probably long enough. There's a little bit going on there, but not very much. And I don't think that that's anything particularly interesting, at least at the aggregate level. Um, a little bit more going on here. This is now just taking the agents who are in that last village, village eight, and um, looking at the shortest path. So each value in this represents an individual agent. And notice that there's not much difference until you, until you start to get um, more population or larger population sizes. 
you get more outliers first, but then when you get to the biggest size nodes, there really is quite a shift up in uh, links. And if you look at this uh, just really closely, and again, the aggregate data, I think, only gets you so far here. But if you notice, um, ignore the first one, it's a little funky, but um, when you start here at the second one, the other size is 100, the mode is at 2, the other size is 200, the mode shifts to 3, but with 2 bigger than 4, and then that kind of mode still at 3 up there when you start with 300 people in a village. Um, and there, and then when you get to population of 500, the mode is full. So that um, not as many short links in, in uh, the larger population. Um, we look at total plots. Um, now, each value here is an agent. We, we get these just swarms of outliers uh, because some people have lots of plots, but you can really see the, the effects of path length now. This is across all runs and everything, so again, it's aggregate. But um, short, short, well, the, these are people in the producing village, but the short path lengths um, tend to have m many more more pots, they require more in the exchange and long path lengths, people do terribly. So I think path length is, is the key here. Uh, it's still really hard to see um, in that aggregate data. So let's go back now. This is one run of the simulation um, at each village size. And you can see um, these are the number of, of pots acquired by people in, in uh, village eight. And Again, look at how poorly people in the in the um, last simulation do there with 500 people as the population size. Um, again, I think that's people marrying in the village rather than out. Um, let's take it a little down a little deeper, and we're going to go into this one run. This is actually one of those first um, when we had the two side by side. This is the, coming out of the network that was on the left. But I want to focus on these three agents which I pull out because they're unusually one way or another. I've got to go my notes here because I don't remember all the details. Um, this is a, a plot here of the total, uh, total number of plots and the path length um, to back to a producing village. These people all live in the village for like five minutes. I think I might make it. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> one way or another, I don't know there, whether I say it or that's the question. Um, so in any case, these, these people are interesting for different reasons. Um, agent number 16, 17 there has a short path and lots. Um, this guy, we have to look at the next graph to see why he's interesting. But that one up there, the only one with the path like the four back there, what is he doing with all those pots? Right? Um, it's kind of, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't really fit. Um, here's the reason why that agent 2390 is interesting. It's because when you look at centrality, so degree centrality on the x-axis between the sun and the y-axis, it looks like it's pretty connected, and yet he didn't have very many pots. And I know it's kind of hard to compare. I'm not sure this one's better. I was trying to think of a way. This worked really well when I had it the two graphs side by side in the stats program. I could brush them and compare it. Um, but you can kind of see what's going on. You know, I don't know. That maybe doesn't work very well. But let's go uh, in numerical order. So, Agent 1617 um, had had high centrality, had high had a short path length, was one one path back to um, the producing village. He's living in Village Eight, remember? Uh, it turns out he was actually born in Village Seven. Um, Fifty-eight years old, has four children in the simulation, so we pulled out his sons. Um, but the interesting thing here is the daughter. So blue here is village two. That's one of those producing villages. Has a daughter by a previous marriage who lives in village two. So he actually married in village two. His wife died. He remarried, moved down to village eight. And so um, the reason why he's got that short path length is that he is that he actually lived in that producing village for a while and then moved down to the other uh, village. Um, and it turns out also he's really well connected. He has high centrality in, in terms of both between this and degree uh, distribution. Um, and he only owned three pots at the end of the simulation, but there were a hundred others that he acquired and gave away, which is kind of interesting. Um, okay, so Agent 2390, this is the guy that seemed to have pretty good um, 
centrality, but just no vessels at all. And again, I should have pointed out in the last one, the big circle there in the middle is the Asia we're talking about. Here you get this, again, he's also born in Village 7, um, relatively short path length back to the village, it's a couple of steps. Um, I, I don't get it. He's got this really dense network. He's got a relatively short connection and just never seem to get anything. So this is sort of a, a puzzle to me. One of the things that suggests that it's more complicated, I think, than, than I thought. And then um, this guy, Agent 3564, the path length is four, but, um, but he actually had um, like the most pots of anybody in that little G. Um, and it turns out that he actually was, he has no connection here, really, or no close connection. Um, the other thing I didn't point out here is we only go three steps back. So I think he goes four steps back, you actually do get a connection, but it's, it's a distant connection back to the producing village. But it turns out that he was born in village two and he married into village eight, right? Um, so he has no connections here, but that's because his parents had. He has no relatives left in village two, but he spent part of this, part of the time in the simulation with connections back there. And that's why he has all those vessels, despite not having them. So, what does that get us? I think it tells us, first off, that path length is really important. I think that this whole small world network thing probably is mostly what's going on here, but, but the, especially that second guy makes me think it's something else. I don't really understand why that guy doesn't do better. Um, another thing, one other thing I did just barely start to look at, in, in all the other runs of the, of the model, it's uh, a preference for endogamy. The women always look for making their home village first, and it's only if they can't find them that they go outside. So I turned that off. Um, so these are two runs with, um, so these are path lengths. Village size is set to 500, which is where people started noticeably doing poorly at, at making connections back to the village. But if you turn off the preference for endogamy and just have all the women look outside the village first, that problem completely goes away. So I think really that that connecting between villages, and especially back to the producing villages, is really the main thing that's going on here. Um, but, there, but it is still more complicated than that, and I don't really know why. Um, um, and then also, this is the same thing, just looking at pots, and notice that some people, at least, um, well, on average, everybody does better, but there's some that do really quite well um, when you turn off the, the preference for actually pretty much that. So if anybody wants to go find a model, um, I'm not sure how far you can get with it at this point. I need to write some explanation and um, maybe get the R scripts there to use for some of this. But the model, at least, is available uh, if you want to play around with it to make your own networks or just figure out what I did wrong or whatever. Um, and then I also want to say thank you to Robert Bischoff who helped me. Um, I, I'm terribly clumsy in R, and so Robert helped me um, figure out how to extract some of the data and, and get the drafts working. And then also the session and conference organizers, um, because I know it's a huge job to keep things organized. And we've done it. Well done.